All right, let's get to orbit. So first things first, how to maneuver your rocket. Here is a keyboard. Um, and uh, to move your rocket around, you're going to use the WASD keys right here on the keyboard. A moves your rocket to the left. Uh, D moves it to the right. W and S move it up and down. And if you want, you can even make it rotate using Q and E. I'll be using uh, W, S, A, and D quite a bit to position the rocket around. So I have a rocket that's capable of getting us into orbit. I've used only the uh, first three branches of the technology tree, so it's fairly low tech. Let's zoom in and take a look at what we've got here. Uh, first, start with the upper stage. That's this bit of the rocket right up here. I've got a capsule, a heat shield, a decoupler, a small fuel tank, and then a liquid fuel engine. I believe I use the Reliant engine. It's a little bit smaller than the swivel engine. If we come over here, you've got your two engines. I've got engine here, engine here. You probably won't have access to this engine right away. You need a little more science. It is awesome for a second stage engine but I'm going to keep it uh, simple so you can replicate this. Then, for my second stage, I have eight little fuel tanks all in a row here. It's a crazy number, but it works. And a swivel engine on the bottom. This engine's cap more than capable of lifting this entire thing up. Now, it needs a little bit of help, so I've attached on the sides two ginormous solid rocket boosters. Solid rocket boosters are inefficient. They don't steer. They can't be throttled up and throttled down. There's a lot of disadvantages, but boy, do they pack a heck of a nice punch. So they're great for getting a rocket off the pad. Then and we're going to do liquid fuel for the rest of the whole way. And that's usually what most people do. So let's launch this thing. It's all ready to go. And oh, the staging. I've got these engines will go first. Then there's going to be decoupling. The solid rocket boosters fall away. This thing will power itself for quite a bit more time. Then I stay, then I ditch that, activate the second stage motor, which is going to finish putting me in orbit. And then this motor will also do all of the orbital maneuvers, including the deorbit. So here we are. Go for launch. On the pad, I'm going to you hit the Z key, put it up to full throttle, put on the stability. You can either click that button or hit T, and launch. <laughs> So getting into orbit, you can't just go straight up. If you do, you'll just go straight down. You have to go straight up and sideways. The most efficient way to do this is to travel east, which is 90 degrees on the nav ball right here. Why east? Because the planet is already rotating in that direction. So you get the rotation of the planet, all that speed, for free. Pretty nice deal. It's also a great direction to go if you're planning on going to uh, the Mun or Minmus or any of the other worlds. Now I'm starting my uh, gravity turn here. And you can see I'm pushing to the right, right along 90 degrees, and tilting the rocket. Now I'm going to watch and see if there's any uh, big wind. You can see this is kind of tilted a little bit here. I can either rotate this or use the W key and the D key to keep it along 90 degrees, which is what I'm doing right now. <coughs> I think I want a little bit more tilt to this. I'm still not seeing any of those big, nasty white streaks, so yeah, why should I bother throttling down? Let's go! And you can see I'm almost out of solid rocket fuel. Ooh, it's getting a little toasty. I have to do something about that. Got about the stage. Goodbye. And maybe I'll tone it down a little bit. Let's throttle down here before we burn up. 
Now I'd like to see how I'm doing with this. So I'm going to hit map. My apoapsis is, whoa, well into space. So I'm going to kill the engines. Oops, why is this not working? There we go. I've turned off the engines. Let's just maneuver this thing a little bit. Now my apoapsis is now 112,000 meters. That's well above uh, Earth's atmosphere. I probably could have had a, a steeper gravity turn, but this is a little bit safer. Um, it gives me a little bit of time to set things up, which is, which is fine. So let's pull up the nav ball here. By the time this, I want to start my thrust again when I reach the apoapsis. If I don't thrust anymore, I'm just going to crash right in here, uh, right back down on Kerbin. So what I want to do is get my rocket so it's aimed horizontal. And I can do that by simply moving. I'm pressing W and D simultaneously and just moving to where it is perfectly horizontal. So now uh, my rocket went right here between blue and, and uh, brown. I am, my rocket is now horizontal to the surface of Kerbin. And if we go to this view, you can see it's more or less horizontal. I've still got some fuel left in this stage, so I'm just going to relight this engine when I get a little closer to the apoapsis. Oh, by the way, apoapsis is the highest point in orbit. The lowest point is the periapsis, and we don't have a periapsis because our periapsis is well inside of Kerbin's body. When we get to an orbit, we'll see that we've got it. Let's get this in line. And I might as well start up now. So I'll hit Z, full throttle. I'll keep this right on the horizon. Check the map. You can see this is getting a little bit wider, so I'm getting close to orbit. When this thing wraps around the whole planet, I'm in orbit. Oh, no more sound, no more warping. I think I'm out of fuel. Yep, I am, so I'm going to throttle down, stage, power up the throttle just a little bit. This engine is very big. If I put up to full throttle, the acceleration will be huge because it's a tiny little rocket. This is kind of overkill. A smaller engine would be great here, but we don't have one. So we'll use what we've got, and now I will activate it. Let's see how I'm doing here. I'll bring up the nav ball. It's coming around. I'll give it a little bit more throttle. Zoom out a little. More, 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 more. And if I zoom out, you can see it's trying to make a big circle around the entire world. There's a the periapsis and kill the engine. My periapsis is at 97,000. Apoapsis, 153,000. Both of those are above 70,000 meters, so I am now officially in orbit. Voila, it's just that simple. So here we go. And the beauty is that once you are in orbit, you can turn off your engines and enjoy the ride because you don't need any thrust to keep you in orbit. You will just remain in orbit forever. No need to do anything. Uh, so you just keep going around and around and around if that's what you want to do. So how do we do stuff uh, when we're in orbit? Let's suppose I want to circularize the orbit. I want this, this is 150,000. I want this to be 150,000. There are these cool maneuver nodes. You click on the apoapsis, add maneuver, and then we thrust a little bit in the forward direction. That will push the periapsis out. So you can see those two numbers, 97,000, and what will happen after my thrust, 103,000. I want to hit 150, so I'll push that a little bit more. Um, Come on, get out there, 150. Yeah, that's about right. So now I can, the fast trick is to click on this little uh, brown line and go to warp to next maneuver. So it time warps you to the next maneuver. 
Maneuver nodes are also great. Not only do they tell you how much uh, you need to burn your rocket, there's a nice little scale. You can also click on Maneuver, and it points your rocket in the correct direction. In this case, it's near, near the prograde uh, vector, and that the prograde just means the direction you're going. Retrograde means the opposite direction. So we have 30 more seconds to before we get there. I'm just going to start it up now. It'll be about right. It's all good. And when this reaches zero, yep, um, then I'm done. And I hit X to make my maneuver node go away. Let's check my handiwork. 153, 147. Pretty close. So there we have it, a circular orbit. Now, at this point, we might all eventually want to get down safely back to Kerbin. Uh, so the most fuel efficient way to do this is to burn at the apoapsis at the highest point. Uh, it will take the least amount of fuel to get us back down. However, I'm going to do something a little, I'm not going to do that because I want to come down during daylight. Uh, landing your rocket uh, right in the middle of night is terrifying because you have no, can't see anything. So I'm going to put a burn here. I had a maneuver here, bring the orbit down, and I want the periapsis to hit the atmosphere, and I want it to be at about 20 to 25,000 meters. That's kind of the optimal. If it's too high, the atmosphere will not stop it, and it will just continue along its orbit. If it's too low, you might burn to a crisp or crash into the surface. So there we have it, 23. And this will now, I will now come down in daylight. Uh, so it will make things a little bit nicer for me, a little easier. I'll work to the next maneuver. Kind of low on fuel, but I think I should be able to do this. You always burn retrograde when you want to lower your orbit. So if I hit the retrograde button, that'll be basically where my maneuver node is. I'll just switch the maneuver node to be even more precise. Uh, we can warp time a little. Let's fire up the engine. I'm just going to hit shift. I'm not going to go full throttle because, again, this thing is way overpowered for what I want to do. A little bit of throttle is plenty. And I'll hit X when it reaches zero. And maybe just a touch more. Eh? Perfect. Oh, look at that. Okay. Now, periapsis, right where I want it, between 20 and 25,000. At this point, I have a little bit more rocket fuel, but let's just warp time, and I'll get to the atmosphere. Where's Kerbin? Oh, I'm in darkness here. I should be coming up on the sunlight pretty soon. Yeah, let's turn on... Where is my ship? There it is. Can you see its silhouette? Yeah. So I've stopped warping time because I've now hit the atmosphere. One thing that I can do if you don't worry, want to hit it too hot is you can burn uh, against the direction of motion. So I'll put it in retrograde. So I'm pointing away from the way I'm going and fire my thruster. I have a tiny bit of fuel here. So full power. All right, well, that was quick. Now I simply uh, turn off SAS, stage this nonsense away. Now I've got a heat shield right here, and we will need it. Let's see how we're doing. Yep, we'll be coming down. So yay, sunrise. Let's warp time a little bit and see what happens. So right now my speed is about 2,000 meters per second, so two kilometers per second. I could run a 5K in two seconds at the speed. Yeah, uh, so things are gonna get a little toasty. Uh, and this is why you wanna bring a heat shield on here. Uh, if you don't have this, your spacecraft could burn up um, in, the, in the atmosphere. I should note while we're coming down, you also want, wanna be careful about your science payload. Now, I'm running out of time. Uh, this, I promise, not a 15-minute video, but this will work. Uh, just takes a little bit more than 15 minutes. All right. Happy flying.